Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel for what is probably a very overdue My Beauty Graveyard where I share my empties. Basically, it's an empties video where I go through everything that I have used up and share my thoughts, whether I will repurchase, if I have repurchased, or what I'm currently using instead. So let's go ahead and get started. I always love seeing color cosmetics used up. It's just so gratifying because they take so long to use up, but as a result, they are rarely featured in these kinds of videos, for me at least. So I have two products that I or two color cosmetics in this video. And so I'm gonna share those first because I personally find those most exciting. The first of which is the e.l.f. Perfect Finish HD Powder. And this kind of had a sad end to its life. I had hit pan um, probably like two months ago on this guy. It's a great finishing powder, but as I was traveling for the holidays, it fell on a hard tile floor and it broke into a million little pieces not to be saved. Um, so it, it kind of died a sad death and because I was traveling at the time, I and e.l.f. is kind of one of those harder brands to get in a store. They Each store carries different varieties or different selections of the brand. I was not able to find this. So what I'm using is actually NYX's HD Finishing Powder. Uh, this is the banana powder. It's the yellow and I got it, I'm sure, because of the... Um, I, t I typically use this setting powder in my under eye area and so this will help kind of cancel out any discoloration, which I am always in need for because um, I find increasingly with with age and allergies and as my skin under my eyes gets thinner I just have more prominent discoloration like blues and purple so I'm always looking for brighteners correctors setting powders and so figured why not kill two birds I have really been liking this guy I am using it to set my eyes right now and have been for the last few videos so overall I'm, I'm really happy with the consistency it might be a smidge more expensive than elf although because this is part of the HD line maybe not this is six bucks and so I don't think the NYX mix might have been might have been like eight I think at Ulta. So overall, good thoughts. I would repurchase the HD powder, but you know, one downside still about e.l.f. is that you, you just can't get it as much in stores as you can other products. So really like the NYX finishing, but still would recommend the e.l.f. HD. I should mention though, the primary difference is that the e.l.f. HD has a, if you can kind of see it from the remnant, no, you probably can't. It's actually a, a white powder. And so overuse or like putting it on too heavily will result in that kind of typical HD white cast wherever you place it and can have a flashback if you heavy if you apply it too heavily. The risk I find is significantly lower when you're using a pressed powder because it's just harder to layer up as much as it is if you were using a loose HD powder like this, but it's still a risk that you don't have when you use something like a banana powder. So just as a means of comparison, just so you're not thinking they're exact dupes for each other because there are some subtle differences that might affect how you feel about them. The other makeup item that I used up was one that nearly reached holy grail status. If you've been with me for between six to eight months, you will have seen this plenty in favorites videos and tutorials. I just used the pants off of it, clearly because it's not an empties video, but it's the Charlotte Tilbury The Retoucher Conceal and Treat Stick and I'm in the shade two or fair. The reason that I love this so much, use it all the time, is because it not only concealed, but it also brightened. I had kind of been bouncing around between concealers and just found that while they they concealed, I mean, they did even out the skin tone in my under eye area, they didn't brighten. I still was kind of left feeling like my under eye area was dull. It just, I still looked tired and this changed the game for me. It concealed and it brightened. I think it did what YSL's Touche Clat is supposed to do. A lot of people love it and you know, it's it's holy grail status for them because of the way it brightens. But I, I don't personally see the hype in it and this, because it does both the brightening and the concealing, made it worth the money. And because the consistency is so um, thin, it made it very, very lay layerable and smooth and creamy and just didn't look like you were wearing anything because it just blends so naturally into the skin, but just makes such a huge difference when it comes to brightening. So use this up. And I think it was Lily Pebbles in her recent, I think it was her year, uh, like 2015 favorites. This, is, this was in it, I think rightfully so. But one of the kind of downsides of it is that you can't tell when you're going to use it up. So I was left totally unprepared when this guy ran out. So I, I just pulled out what I had recently gotten in as an Ipsy bonus, which was this Amazing Cosmetics Amazing Concealer. And my shade here is in the shade Light Golden. You probably will have seen me use this in videos as well. And I have to say I'm a fan. I, the re, part of the reason I didn't repurchase the Charlotte Tilbury is because I, I was pretty impressed with how this performed in both coverage and brightening. 
Uh, it is a slightly heavier texture than the Charlotte Tilbury, which is kind of a downside for me. I really like to keep things nice and light to keep things from um, get caking up and just looking a little bit too unnatural there. But overall, I would have to say it does a really, really good job. And then I recently got, I think the entire line of the Makeup Forever Ultra HD concealers that they sent me. And this is kind of like the perfect marriage between the two of these guys as far as texture goes. And there's a color correcting line and a concealing line. This is part of the concealer. This is Y23. And it's like, it's a great shade for me. Absolutely love it. It is what I am wearing right now underneath that NYX banana shade. So even though I am super sad to see the retoucher go, I am pretty impressed with what I have found in both Makeup Forever's and Amazing Cosmetics concealers. Next, I'm gonna blow through a couple of products because I'm gonna be honest, they have been in the last two to three graveyard videos. So I won't go too much into detail. I'll just give you the top level information to let you know the reason why they've been in so many empties videos. Let's start with the Caress Adore Forever, basically my body wash. This is the body wash that I've been using for so stinking long. It's because of the scent. Not only is it a great scent, it is kind of a more perfumey, like um, it's not, it's sweet, but it's not fruity and kind of the typical refreshing body wash smell. It's a little bit sultrier, hence the name Adore Forever. There are two scents, this kind of pink one and then a red one. I think they smell very, very similar. So I tend to just grab whatever's first on the shelf. Um, but basically this is like the, the body wash with the longest lasting fragrance I've ever had, which is explicitly what it claims to do is 12 hour fragrance release. So very effective at doing that. I love the scent. It hasn't gotten old yet. And so I have my backup bottle right here. Next up is a hair product and this is Selma Hayek's Nuance Texture, Texture Enhancing Finishing Spray. This again is like the second or third bottle I have featured here. I did actually repurchase it. I know I was griping in my last graveyard video that uh, people were buying these off the shelves. I, no, I could not find any CVSs that had these on the shelves. I finally found one, stocked up on two, so I do have a backup of this. However, Birchbox was having a sale before the holidays and my, whenever I get my hair cut, my hairstylist uses Orbe. I think that's how you pronounce it. If not, please feel free to correct me. Um, but she uses the brand Orbe. The Opry Beach, when I have curly hair, that holds curls in my hair like crazy. And then to give it texture, she always uses this dry texturizing spray, or maybe she hasn't used it, but when I was asking for a recommendation, this is what she recommended. So they were having a sale. I decided to indulge and I got not only the Opry Beach, which I've used here in a video, a get ready with me video, I believe, but also this dry texturizing spray. And I have to say, I like the way this grips onto my hair a little bit more than the Nuance. Well, actually a lot more than the Nuance. I find that it can do so without leaving a powdery texture like so many dry, or like a powdery um, cast on my hair, like so many dry shampoos do. It's really effective at creating that texture. But something that I found when I um, kind of layer and spray the Nuance to the same level that I do the Orbe is that this will get a little too gritty. It'll make my hair a little bit too straw-like is the perfect word. Like it'll just accumulate a little too much. And so my hair will become almost like I put a hairspray in it, but less crunchy, like a hairspray might make it and just less mobile. And I find that I just get way more movement and more moisture wicking and more texture while still getting that nice fluid movement that I like my hair to have using the Orbe. So it is quite the splurge folks. I am not gonna lie. This was a great drugstore alternative, but I mean, it just, it works. It really, really works and I just like it so much more. Jumping back to shower gels though, I should, there's an honorable mention here and that's the Body Shop Coconut Shower Cream. I'm not a super fan of coconut scents. They do have this in a body spritz, which for some reason I like way more than any of the other products that are scented like the like coconut I guess um, but I use it up it's it's nice and hydrating it's nothing super special I don't think even though the body shop has a ton of great products this just wasn't anything um, it didn't do anything super special to make me want to repurchase and it didn't have the same kind of scent longevity as the other one that I just mentioned did so Great, use it up, but um, probably won't repurchase. This video is kind of all over the place in terms of categories, but one last hair care item before I move completely into skincare. This is the Aveda Femoleant Styling Foam. This is another one that I think I've mentioned at least once on the channel. It is basically, I pair it with, Aveda also has a volumizing tonic, so I spray the tonic and then I 
put a couple pumps of this and, and run it through my hair. It's considerably less thick than a mousse, uh, but it basically functions the same way as a mousse in giving your roots a lot of lift and volume. I really love it. I do have to say that I am using a totally new bottle. I love it so much. I didn't purchase this. My mom also uses it, actually the same combination, and she recently, not so recently, a couple months back, got her hair cut shorter. She has a pixie cut, but she got it cut quite a bit shorter, and just said that that combination, and she has much thicker hair than mine, that combination was making her hair too thick. She's like, it takes forever to style. It just isn't doing what I want for my hair. And so she, it made it her hair too thick. Like, I wish I had that problem. So she gave me this and I will definitely continue to use it. I'm sure once I run out of this, I, I will repurchase it again because it just, it's, it's great. It's just my go-to kind of volumizing styling foam that doesn't weigh my hair down because anyone who struggles with volume wants the lift but has to use product to get it knows that there's a very delicate balance between the amount of product you put in your hair without compromising the volume. <laughs> And now moving on to skincare. I have quite a few kind of sample sized items that I've accumulated over the past few months. The first of which is a deep cleansing oil from the brand DHC. Basically, this is an oil cleanser. If you're not familiar with that, what that is, it starts as an oil. You can apply it to your face right off the bat. It'll kind of help remove makeup, especially heavy duty like mascara, um, waterproof business, things like that. And then you can add a water and it will gently foam. If you are a serious foam lover, this is not for you. You get a gratifying foam out of it but nothing super sudsy so right off the bat if you love foam this oil cleanser is probably not for you but it definitely gets the job done and I do this kind of turned me on to the oil cleanser concept which I used to be very apprehensive about for my combination skin it goes on suds up cleanses off but still leaves your skin feeling fortified without being overly heavy and it's just so much easier to take off your makeup. So I really, really liked it, but shortly after using this up, I received this from Vichy from CVS, and it's the Beautifying beautifying Cleansing Micellar Oil. Clearly, I really like it, um, and it, I think it's meant to be more exclusively a makeup remover as opposed to a cleanser. So you use this in addition to your cleanser, and it has a considerably thinner consistency than this did, and I just find I like this better because it was more effective at removing my makeup. I don't mind having to use a follow-up cleanser if this is just supposed to be uh, you know like I, I really I care less about consolidating my makeup removal and cleanser in one than I do about just getting everything off which is really my main struggle when it comes to um, skincare at night anyway is just getting especially eye makeup really close to the lash line off I nearly no matter how clean I think I get my eyes I will, I will wake up the next morning with like gunk and stuff, the lash line, I just, ugh. It's, I really just want to go to bed clean. And so I feel like this did a better job and I really, like I said, don't mind adding the extra step of cleansing. So I will probably repurchase this. Next up is a toner that I got in a Play by Sephora box. It's the Fresh Black Tea Age Delay Instant Infusion Treatment Toner. It protects and moisturizes. I think this must have been two months ago, kind of as we entered into winter. And I was really excited because, you know, toners can tend to be a little harsh depending on where they're from, what they contain, all that kind of stuff. And for combination skin, it seems counterintuitive or even oily skin. Your instinct is to remove the oil, but then your skin ends up only overproducing it. And so this was kind of a nice compromise between feeling like I cleanse my skin while also rebalancing it so it wouldn't like go into oil overproduction. However, it had kind of a heavier milky consistency, which is obviously very hard to see now that it's empty. Um, but maybe you can kind of see down here that basically it had a heavier texture than my current toner, which is the Polish Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA liquid um, with salicylic acid. This is specifically formulated for acneic skin, which is also good for me because I'm not only combo skin, but I also am acne prone. So this just feels a little bit lighter. It still doesn't feel like I'm stripping my skin, but it also has that salicylic acid Acid so I can count on it eliminating or helping to eliminate any kind of rogue breakouts I have going on. And then I have two products that I'm gonna lump together because I really don't feel one way or the other about them. I don't think they were meant for my current skin issues and so I didn't really notice a huge difference in using them. Um, and they are the Peter Thomas Roth Laser Free Resurfacer Face Serum 
in this little tube. And then the Ula Henriksen Truth Serum Collagen Booster. It's basically a vitamin C serum. And I just didn't notice anything spectacular happening with these guys. It's a solid sample size. Like I do feel like I was able to test them long enough to get a good idea of how they interact with my skin over the course of, you know, a month, which is I personally have to have when trying skincare because my skin changes so drastically over the course of a month, both hormonally, stress-wise, all that kind of stuff. So I do feel like I got a solid sampling of them, but I just didn't notice like any wow sort of results. Um, no negative results by any means, just no, you know, not right for my skin type. And so I don't, I'm really neither here nor there on them. And last has kind of become a cult product here, at least on YouTube, and it's the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. Um, people are raving about this, but most of them have dry skin. A uh, few of them have combo skin, but I'm not one of them. I, it wasn't bad by any means. Like it's a very refreshing sort of mist and it smells pretty good. But as far as like working miracles for my skin, I think it is best suited for dry skin for that very reason, because like I said, while refreshing, I just didn't notice it working any, any miracles. Um, certainly don't see the hype that a lot of people see in it, but bear in mind, combo skin here. So probably not the primary user for a dewy skin mist. So that's it for me, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear what products you have been using up or if you have any opinions on the products that I have mentioned here, definitely let me know in the comments below. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.